Welcome everyone to Bethel Assembly Online. We're so glad that you could join with us this morning and a special hello to all our congregation uh, watching from home and to the visitors that are able to join with us this morning. And if you're visiting for the first time, a special welcome. And uh, we're just so glad that you could join with us. Just before the shofar blows and our call to worship, I'm going to read a scripture from 2 Timothy 1 and verse 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Let's claim that promise today uh, from the Lord and let's worship together.
praise the Lord. with us. Praise the Lord. No matter what we face, no matter what we go through, he is with us. Praise the Lord. I just want to give a couple of announcements before we continue on in worship this morning. And you can check out on our Facebook, Bethel Assembly Woodstock, for all our upcoming events leading up to Easter. Or you can call us at the church here, 328-2872. Visit our website, Bethel woodstock.ca and during uh, this season especially we just encourage you to continue to give your tithes and offerings and we have communicated with our congregation how you can continue to do that during this season and if you're not part of our congregation but you'd like to make a donation uh, just uh, follow that same information online for more uh, and you can get more details Especially during this time, we want to continue to uh, support our missionaries. Uh, we have uh, missionaries in India, and right now they are uh, in a crucial time. They have a lot of poor living around them that work day to day and uh, are paid day to day. And everything has shut down, mostly in India. And so our missionaries are having to raise funds and gather food for the poor. So if you're able to assist with that, uh, you can contact us for, for my, or more information on how to do that. We also have mil uh, missionaries in Malawi and in other countries. So you can continue to assist with that. Next Sunday, Easter Sunday morning, is our MAC missions offering. So you can just designate it uh, on your offering envelopes for that. This coming week, uh, I'm going to be starting uh, devotions about devotion time on Sunday or Monday mornings about 10 a.m. online so you can join with me for that and also this Wednesday at 7 p.m. 
will be a special Passover presentation. Last year we did it for the first time, and so we're going to do that again, just a little different online, but you'll be able to join with us, and we just encourage you to have juice and a cracker ready, and we'll be taking communion at the end of that presentation. So that's Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. Just watch online for more details leading up to Easter, other activities that will be going on, and the Lord bless you. Thank you, Shannon, so much. Um, it is a joy for us to uh, do this service online, and I have to tell you that we really do love the Lord, and we desire that everyone everywhere desire the Lord too. Early this morning, I was seeking the Lord, and I just felt his presence, and one of the things that came to me was to, and I, I, I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, help me sing. Help me sing to you. See, yes, we're doing this streaming. And yes, we're singing songs to uplift your spirit. But to be honest with you, I'm not singing for your enjoyment. I'm singing for the audience of one. I'm singing for the audience of one because he is my Lord and my Savior and my Master. And I just invite you, especially when it comes time to this song, it says, magnify the Lord with me. Come exalt the Lord or his name together. Glorify the Lord with me. Come exalt his name. And whether you are sitting in a room by yourself or in a motel or in somewhere where you are watching this stream, I'm going to invite you to do something. The Bible says to lift up hands without wrath or dissension. It's not a Pentecostal thing. It's just a thing for the family of God that we can raise our hands and begin to worship him and allow your soul to be caught up. Allow your spirit to be caught up in his presence because in his presence there is fullness of joy. So I found myself, Lord, help me to sing through my spirit through the stuff that's going on in my soul as you're in my mind and help me to worship you. The Bible says, Jesus said it like this, that if you're going to worship the Father, you must do so in spirit and in truth. I admonish you to worship the Lord with us. taken from Psalm 34. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from every fear those who look on him are radiant They'll never be ashamed. They'll never be ashamed. Magnify the Lord with me. Come exalt his name. Together glorify. Salt is a name to This poor man cried, and the Lord heard me and saved me from mine enemies, the Son of God. Surrounds his saints, he will deliver them, he will deliver them. Magnify the Lord with me, come exalt his name together. Glory. 
glorify the Lord with me. Come exalt his name together. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, blessed is he who hides in him. Oh, fear the Lord, all of you saints. He'll give you everything. He'll give you everything. Exalt his name together. Glorify the Lord with me. Come exalt his name forevermore. I will bless the Lord every day. Never-ending praise, may our incense rise. I will bless the Lord every day and night. Never-ending praise, may our incense arise. Let us bless the Lord every day and night. Bless the Lord every day and night, never-ending praise. May our incense arise and magnify the Lord with me. Come exalt His name. Exalt His name forevermore. Magnify. Come exalt his name. 
Hosanna in the 
with our hearts filled with praise. We exalt you, Lord our God, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the I'm reminded today is Palm Sunday, and that's what the crowd was shouting as Jesus entered Jerusalem many, many years ago. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. And that's where the words of that song come from. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Pastor Ron's going to come now and share the word. And just be blessed as we share together. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let all that is within me praise the Lord. Glory to God. It's good to be with you, as I said earlier, live streaming. I, um, we've always been uh, cognizant of the fact that our sound is coming through loud and clear, and sometimes it might come through a little loud than clear, but we are certainly glad that uh, you are joining with us. Our sound will improve as time goes on. I would like us to turn our attention to 1 John chapter 4, 1 John chapter 4, Heavenly Father, it is a delight to be in your presence. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of song. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of praise and for worship. And we recognize that because we are in your presence, in your place of shelter, we are sheltered from so much. But, oh God, we recognize that there is much that's going on in our world. But Lord, as we look into your word today, I ask that you would help us open our eyes and open our ears and soften our hearts that we'll be able to hear, see you, hear you, and to know you in our hearts as our own personal Lord and Savior. 1 John chapter 4, verse 18, and I'm going to start in the King James Version. It says... There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear has torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Now I'm going to read that out of the NLT, the New Living Translation. Such love has no fear because perfect love expels all fear. If we are afraid... It is for fear of punishment. And this shows that we have not fully experienced his perfect love. This coronavirus is dominating wall-to-wall media coverage. Everywhere you turn, people are talking about it. It's on the news, on your computer, on your radio, in your emails, in the newspaper. It's everywhere. People are hurrying to stock up, and places are running out of masks and hand sanitizers and cleaning wipes and even, yes, toilet paper. Really. There is so much negativity surrounding this time. How can anyone keep positive with this fear-based media? It really is something else. But don't, don't get me wrong. Washing your hands and being prepared, come on. They make, you, they, they, they make you walk around in fear even in your house. The amount of damage that is caused by feeding this beast 
this fear makes such a negative impact on our world, even though there are so many threats in our everyday life. We simply live in a fallen world. They focus on the unknown, and that, that sells. Now, I'm not trying to diminish the danger of the virus or take away from the severity that there is in our uh, world for people that have a weak immune system. I, I, I don't want to take away from the pain someone might be going through right now from the virus. My, my heart aches for you, seriously. I have loved ones too that are in the at-risk category. I have those that are working on the front lines. I have kids and grandkids. I don't want to get this thing, and I don't want them to get it either. I, all I'm saying is that as believers, there is a different focus. The media speak to fear because fear sells. They don't frequently speak of life. They don't focus on the survivors of the virus and how it seems to be sparing kids. They don't mention how people are dying of homelessness, heart disease, or even the flu. They don't talk about how people survived Ebola, SARS, and the swine flu, and others. I'm just saying that there are times we need to block out the media. I'm a firm believer. I believe in being smart. I believe in being vigilant. I am taking this thing seriously. So yes, wash your hands. All I'm saying is, watch your sources and don't feed into the fear. There have been worse things with less medical equipment. And well, yes, we have hope. We have a hope in Jesus. It's time for us to take a big, deep breath. It's so easy to look at the headlines and the uncertainty of what's to come and start to fear. But one thing I've had to work on in my life is not to react out of fear. Instead, react from a standpoint of faith in Jesus. Not faith in my beliefs, but faith in Jesus he is the center. He is the king. In our scripture that we read, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear has torment. He that fears is not made perfect in the love of God. It's so important that we, that we uh, guard our viewing, that we guard our ears. Where there is fear, where there is fear, there is no faith. My question to myself and to you is, do you trust him? Do you trust him that he has you? He is stronger than any sickness. He is stronger than Satan himself. In fact, I heard it said years ago that uh, the devil's heavy artillery is no match for God's BB guns. Hmm. Almighty God loves you. Almighty God cares for you. His grace has no bounds. It is perfect love. If you are already a believer, then why not take this opportunity to draw closer to him and trust him? If you don't know him, the best and the smartest thing you can do is come to know him as your personal Lord and Savior. I can give you a few reminders to help you get through this, this uh, scary time of this virus. One thing is to pray. Talk to God. Pray to God. Share your fears and concerns with him. Cry out 
Pray for good health. Declare your house to be a house of healing. Ask for peace and hope for those dealing with the virus and anxieties. He knows. He cares. He loves. Let me say that again. He knows. He loves. He cares. Beware. But don't be scared. Choose faith over fear. There are plenty of things in this world that threaten us daily. Some that we aren't even aware. <laughs> like the old man said one day, he says, you know, I have many fears and not one of them has come to pass. Then you have guys like Job. The thing that I fear has come upon me. Wow, interesting perspectives. It's okay to make yourself aware. But don't give in to panic and to fear. Fear is real. And you can overcome it. You can overcome it with God's word. He addresses it. As a matter of fact, God addresses it some 365 times in the Bible. Shannon read one. For God has not given a spirit of fear. You go, wow, that's, that's different. Spirit, yes. There is a spirit realm. That spirit realm is just as real as you and I. God has not given to us a spirit of fear, but he has given to us power, love, and well, a sound mind or the discipline or the smarts to be aware. Praise the Lord. Psalm 23, 4 says it like this. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not fear. Now that's talking to yourself, isn't it? As the psalmist walks through his life and in the difficulties that he faces. I will not fear. For he said something really interesting. For you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect me and comfort me. Now that's a wonderful place to be in. And then we sang the song out of Psalm 34. But verse 4 says, I prayed to the Lord. I prayed to the Lord. And he freed me from all of my fears. Huh. I, I think maybe it's time for us to believe in living in the design that God designed us for. Do you know virus, this virus has an image. If it had no image... It would have no power. This thing with an image has power because we give it the image. If I offered you, and I don't have the money, but if I had the money and I offered you $1,000, you would be rushing toward me and that virus would almost would be non-existent because you'd be thinking more about receiving that $1,000. You wouldn't be concerned about the virus. Don't worry, I'm not giving away $1,000. But you have the idea that, that the image of that thing is completely gone because there is a, another image that you see that you want more. See, you would come for it, virus or no virus. This Corona-19 has an image. Yes, it does, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about it earlier. But right now, I want to show you something else that's in the Word of God. And there are two images in this world. And one of them is found in, in Matthew chapter 21. And it's, it's about the triumphant entry. Shannon mentioned that this was Palm Sunday. In uh, Matthew 21, verse 1, it says, As Jesus and the disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to the town of Bethage in the Mount of Olives, and Jesus sent two that's of his disciples, two of them ahead. And he says to him, go into the village over there, and as soon as, as you enter it, you will see a donkey tied there with its colt beside it. Tie, untie them and bring them to me. And if anyone asked you what you are doing, you just say, the Lord needs them. And he will immediately let you take them. Now, this took place 
to fulfill the prophecy that said, tell the people of Jerusalem, look, your king is coming to you. He is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. Now I could take it some time and teach on just that, just that portion. He's riding on the donkey and the donkey's colt. But at the end of the verse, notice it says this took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. This being Palm Sunday, you know, is a remembering. We are remembering the day which Jesus himself rode into Jerusalem on the back of a young donkey. This day has been described by, by Christians for generations as the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. But have you ever asked yourself the question, if this is a triumphant entry, then why in the world did they crucify Jesus at the end of the week? Their emotions got in them. And, and emotions got all haywire somewhere. This triumphant entry was a big deal. Have you ever asked yourself the other question, how did this crowd come to be there? That's another good question, isn't it? Why? Billboards were not around. Telephones were not invented. The only way they could have known that Jesus was coming was by word of mouth. You know, it was impressive. You had all these people coming without all of our modern day advertising. No cell phones. Well, no Facebook. No YouTube. But you see, it was awesome because there is a crowd that was there. You have Jesus who, who comes riding in on a donkey. He comes in. He came in peace. He came to give people peace. He was the very Prince of Peace himself. These people that were gathering were probably people that would prefer salvation from taxes as opposed to salvation of their sins. And so in a few days, these same people would also prefer Barabbas instead of freeing Jesus. Somehow, their emotions got carried away. Do you know that their cry, Hosanna, Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna is a very interesting word in itself. It's a, it's a transliteration from Hebrew into Greek and, and then into English. But it actually means, save us now. Hosanna, save us now. I'm not sure that they really understood what it was that they were saying. But that is exactly what Jesus came to do. Hmm. Can you imagine? Jesus knew that the donkey would be there waiting for, the, for him in the next town. He sends some disciples ahead of him to get that donkey. You may not know what that medical test is going to turn out. But Jesus does. You may not know whether there is a decent job or when this virus stuff is all done. But Jesus already has in mind and already has the plans for you. If he knows that there's going to be a donkey when, when he gets there to that, to that uh, spot, yes, he knows. He knows your carries, your worries, your fears. Satan would have us believe otherwise. But living, living by Jesus' words, when he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And he will never lead you on a fool's errand. He knew that donkey was going to be there. And he knew what needed to be done to get that donkey to him. Now you may not know that Jesus 
procession into Jerusalem was not the only procession the city saw that day. In the year 30 AD, Roman historians record that the governor of Judea, Pontius Pilate, also led a procession of Roman cavalry and centurions into the city at that same time. Pilate's procession was meant to show a military might, a strength. He's in charge. He wasn't coming to bring peace. Yes, he was trying to settle a revolt, but Jesus' procession was meant to show the very opposite. In very opposite gates they came in. Both Matthew and Mark record Jesus' own words as he instructs his disciples to go into the city and find the donkey tied up. They are to ask the owner if they can use the donkey, and they are to say, the Lord needs him. Huh. He didn't even have a donkey of his own. And yet this pilot comes in riding on his big horse with an army, mind you. Jesus doesn't have an army coming with him. It's so very, very different. Jesus quotes the prophet Zechariah, reminding that those that heard of him, it says, God will deliver the nation from the oppressor. Yes, but the king that is to be sought after is coming humbly, not on a steed of war, but on a slow-moving donkey, the symbol of a king who comes in peace, according to Zechariah's word. The two processions could not be more different in the messages they convey. Pilate leading the human centurions, displaying the power and might of the empire of Rome, which crushes all who oppose it. Jesus, coming riding on a young donkey, demonstrates the peace and the tranquility and the shalom that only God brings. Those who watched that day had to make a choice. They will either serve God, the God of this world of might and power, or they will choose to serve the king of a very different kingdom, the kingdom of God. In this time of, of pandemic, people will also make a choice. Whether they will live in fear, or whether they will live in the faith of the King of Kings. Earlier I said to you the virus has an image. If it had no image, it would have no power. I, I would suggest that you say no to fear. And that you say yes to King, Je to King Jesus. In the scripture, do you know that there were three Hebrew boys... And you can read about it in your Bibles in Daniel chapter 3 from verses 1 to 23. I'm not going to read it. But this Nebuchadnezzar, he builds a gold statue, 90 feet high and 9 feet thick. He sets it up in the province of Babylon. He orders all the important leaders in, in the province and everybody who is anybody to the dedication ceremony of this, of this statue. They all come to the, for this dedication. And they took their places before the statue that Nebuchadnezzar had erected. And a, a herald comes out and he proceeds to, to tell them, everyone, every race, every color, every creed, listen, when you hear the band strike up all the trumpets and the trombones and the tubas and the baritones and the drums and the cymbals, you are to fall on your knees and worship the golden statue that Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Anyone who does not kneel and worship shall be thrown immediately into a roaring furnace. And then there were some Babylonian fortune tellers that stepped up and accused the Jews. They went to the king and they said, uh, long live the king. You gave strict orders. Oh, king, it, th th there's, there's a, when the big band started playing, everyone was supposed to fall on their knees and worship the golden statue. And whoever did not go to their knees and worship, you were going to pitch in a roaring flame. Well, there are some Jews by name of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, whom you 
have placed in high positions in the province of Babylon. These men, they're ignoring you. They don't respect your gods. They don't respect this golden statue that you set up. So, furiously, the king ordered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to be brought in. And the king, Shadrach, and, and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they did not respect the gods. They refused to worship the golden image. The king even gives them a second chance. From now on, when that band strikes up, you got to go to your knees and you got to worship that statue that I've made. If you don't worship it, I'm going to pitch you in a, I used to say, in a burning, furry, fiery furnace. But it was a fiery furnace. In fact, when the three Hebrew boys said, no, we're not going to bow to this thing. And you know what? Our God that we serve can rescue us from this roaring furnace. And anything else you might cook up. little humor there. But even if it doesn't, it's not going to make a bit, a bit of difference, old king. We're, we, we won't serve your gods. We won't bow down. We won't go down to your statues. And that totally fur, furiated, infuriated uh, Nebuchadnezzar. His anger got so he wanted them to turn up the, the furnace seven times hotter. So they were pitched in that, in that fire because they refused to bow, to, to bow down. Every single person in the sound of my voice must decide what image or what king you will worship. A king of terror, a king of fear, or the king of kings, the Lord of lords. Some people will serve Jesus until pressure comes. Some people today are like the people who cried out as Jesus rode through Jerusalem, Hosanna! Save us, Hosanna! But at the end of crucifying him, well, there was stuff that happens. And they ended up crucifying him. I pray that you will not let your emotions get out of line or out of order. I pray that you will choose King Jesus and receive from him the peace that you need. It's a peace that surpasses all understanding, that God can guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. See, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out or drives out that fear. <coughs> because fear has torment. His perfect love is strong enough to deal with your fear. The fear of dying, the, the fear of disease, the fear of losing family. Are you hearing his voice in the midst of the media? Are you hearing his voice in the midst of the crowd? Or are you joining the crowd? Why not step out of the crowd and take a stand for what you know to be truth? Yes, look after yourself. Wash your hands. Keep your distances. Huh. One of the biggest questions on this Palm Sunday story is, how will I respond when Jesus comes humbly into my life? How am I going to respond when Jesus comes humbly? Maybe it's time for you to choose to receive God's love and receive his life of peace. And by doing so, you are choosing to say no to fear. Heavenly Father, I pray for this world, especially those who are listening now. I pray that people would cast all their cares and their anxieties on you. Give them peace that surpasses the understanding of even their forefathers. 
I pray for miracles and healings that you would be made known in them. I pray for wisdom and supernatural strength for people who are tirelessly working in the medical field or to help contain this virus. Protect them, O oh God, and their families. I pray for the businesses that are impacted by this outbreak. I pray for their finances, that their finances would grow in supernatural ways. I pray that this virus would be stopped in its tracks. And above all else, I pray that people would turn closer to you and more on fire with their relationship with you. That they would know your word and that they would truly believe it and live it out. I ask, Father, my wonderful Heavenly Father, that your kingdom would come and your will would be done. Thank you, Lord, for your word in Genesis 28 that says, you command your blessing upon those who follow your ways. I pray that your people will be found before you following your ways. And as they do, I pray that you will bless them, protect them, sustain them, and guard them. I ask that you would make your face to shine upon them with your favor. I pray that you would be gracious to them and surround them with your loving kindness. I pray that you would lift up your countenance upon them with your divine approval and give them peace of heart and mind and body. I pray that your people would reach the purpose for which you created them for. I pray, O oh God, that you would give them courage above their peers. I pray that your people would have more passion for your things than others think may be necessary. I pray that your people would dream dreams more than others would think practical. I pray that your people would expect more than others think possible. I pray that your people would see things that others don't know exist. I pray that your people would bless their children and that those children would become giants under your mighty hand. I pray, O oh Lord, that your people, that you would watch over them in their rising up, in their sitting down, in their going out, and in their coming in. I pray, O oh Lord, that your blessing would come upon them and overtake them, whether they're in the city or in the country. I pray that their offspring, their ground and their animals would be blessed. I pray, O oh Lord, that you would bless the works of their hands. I pray, O oh Lord, that those who rise up against your people would be defeated. I pray that your love would work in them, your love would work through them, and your love would work for them. I call 1 Corinthians 13 into action that says love never fails. So I pray that your people would not fail, that they would remain in your love. I pray that you by your spirit would help us to be one as you are one. I thank you, Lord, for the other ministries and other churches that there are in this community. I ask, Father, that you would guard them and protect them. Thank you, Lord, for the anointing that comes as we dwell together in unity. Thank you, O oh God, that the promises that are in your word, if we would diligently obey you, thank you for the promise that your blessing would overtake us and run us down. So now give us your word, O oh God. Give us your wisdom and strong obedience that through that strong obedience to you, your blessing would run us over and also someone else as we bless them as well for your honor and for your glory and for your praise. And I pray according to Psalm 122 for the shalom of Jerusalem. I thank you, O oh God, for their protection. You are their protection. And your word that says those who love them and bless them, you will bless. I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord makes his face to shine upon you and be gracious. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace so that they put my name, they shall put my name upon the people of Israel and I will bless them. And Lord, I ask that mercy and peace and your love would be multiplied to each one in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.